Hello and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. My name is Lucy Aida. I am a Wilson Bickford trained instructor. I also teach my own methods and I teach many of his methods. Today I'm going to show you my original design, which is just a simple sailboat on a very pretty colored background. I will be using a variety of paints. As you can see, some of them are dripping a little bit. Um, I'm using oil paint today, and um, I will show you what color I'm using as I'm using them, just for the sake of time. So, at first, to prep my canvas, I taped on a simple design of a sailboat. Um, this is uh, masking tape where you can get any place. I put the tape on and I used an X-Acto knife and cut around it. You can trace on with graphite paper uh, any picture you like, a boat of any kind, and just use a stylus to transfer your pattern on. Okay, so what I have done to prep my canvas, which is a canvas board, a 16 by 20 inch canvas board, was I used a white fast flow and simply used a large two inch scenery brush and painted on the fast flow. And there's a hair, and that's how we get them off. We just lift them right up. This fast flow will help the paint flow very evenly and it'll make everything look nice and smooth and soft. So. Just going to get started now. Here we go. In the sky, I'm going to use some Prussian blue on this large two inch scenery brush. I'm tapping in the blue, you can see it's such a pretty color blue. Okay, and every once in a while I will be putting down my palette so I can uh, better control my brush. Here we go. This is one of my favorite colors, Prussian blue. And you can see how smooth the paint is going on with that fast flow. Now, the fast flow white is going to get picked up into the blue, and that's okay. It'll make it nice shades of color rather than just plain blue. As I go further down into the horizon, I'm lightening up my stroke with the brush. You can see I'm going right across the tape, across the sailboat. And how simple it is to make a nice guy, darker on top, lighter as we come down. Quick and easy, anybody can do this. Now, I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe a little bit of that Prussian blue out of my brush. You can see how much came out. I'm going back and forth very gently, smooth some of these lines out. So, since I didn't put more paint on my brush, I'm blending. When I have paint on my brush, I'm painting. There we go. Now, if I wanted to smooth that more, I could actually go a step further and I can use a nice fluffy brush, a blending brush, and go back and forth. And you'll see how those lines will just fade away. Okay, very nice, nice simple. Okay, I wiped it off a little. Now, what I'd like to do is come down into the bottom, which will be the water. I wiped my brush off before, and you can see I put a little line across here. I used a T-square so that my horizon would be straight. Can use a ruler and just mark each side, and then put your pencil line across. It's not necessary, but I find that it helps me, and with a limited amount of time like this on show, it makes it much easier for me. So here I go, putting in just what was left over on my brush. And now at the bottom, I'd like the bottom a little darker, so I will go back to my paint. And I won't always pick up my palette, but when I am going back, I'm just tapping in a little more color. So when I say I'm picking up a little paint, I'm just turning around, tapping it in. I'm going to start on the bottom and make this bottom darker. This will help with the perspective of the painting. Give it some nice depth. So the bottom, just like the top of the sky, will be darker. There we go, same thing, right across. Now, I'm not going to blend out this water as I did the top. I like the way these streaks look. Now I'm going to be putting more lines in there lady, later, which will look like um, uh, breaks in the water. So what I'd like to do now is 
I'm going to add some nice fluffy clouds. And I've done clouds before. These I will try to make as whisky as I can. There we go. And on the corner of my brush, I'm just rubbing them in. I'm not adding a heavy paint on these clouds like I did the other ones because I want these to be faded more. I don't want the clouds to be a focal point. So I'm just rubbing it in. I'm letting the blue mix with the white. And just going to rub them in. Going to wipe off my brush just a little bit. Come back, get a little more white. So I'm just tapping the white in like you saw me do. And putting a little more up here. As they come down to the horizon, they get a little smaller. And we'll have some nice clouds formations. If I wanted to make this a stormy day, I could actually add some dark and I would mix it with a little black and make it a stormy day. So just to lift up these clouds, I'll go back to my feather brush and lift up. I'm not pushing the brush at all. I see some lines it pulls up. So we just go across, it blends in. I want to blend these clouds in a little and set them back. And there we go. That would be it for the sky. Now, into the water. What I'd like to do is start by using a large flat brush. Large flat brush is great for doing straight lines. This is called chiseling the edge of the brush. I made it nice and sharp. I'm using this very dark Prussian blue. I'm going to come across the water and on the chisel edge, I'm pushing, laying the brush down, picking it up. And what this is going to do is make lines in the water. I'll blend them out and it will look realistic. I'll come back, get more paint. And little by little, I will keep putting these lines in, letting the paint flow off the brush until there's no more paint. There we go. Now this is great if you do have a sky that's dark. You can come in, you can put grays and blacks, and it'll look like the water is reflecting the dark sky. As I come up closer to the horizon, I'm making them a little lighter. Now, it kind of looks funny right now, but it'll be nice once I blend it. Here we go. Here is again, still with the Prussian blue. Now what I'm going to do, without wiping off my brush, I'm going to go into an ultramarine blue. Just a different shade of a blue. I'm going to add a little bit of white, change the color a little. See how easy that is to mix? It's like butter. This paint is like butter. And here I go. I'm going to put in thick, thin, thick, thin. I'm leaving some of that background showing. This way it will peek through, going right across my sailboat. Getting a little more paint, same color, coming down at the bottom, adding more. There we go. Now what I'd like to do is wipe my brush off. I'd like to come into a little bit of this red, get a little bit of violet. I had blue in my brush with the white, mix it with the red, and now we have a soft purple color. Just want to add a little bit of soft purple in here. I could have added that to the sky, but for the sake of time, I left that out so we can work more on the water and the sailboat. Since I've done a couple segments with skies in already. Now, now that we have all our lines in the water, I'd like to blend it out. I'm going to go back to my two inch brush, my two inch scenery brush, and here we go. Starting where it's lighter, and I'm going back and forth. Back and forth. Now, if I see I'm spreading the paint too much, I can easily wipe the brush off. 
right now it's spreading nicely into each other, which is what we wanted. We want to give this a nice water effect with darks and lights. I may even come down at the bottom and put a little more dark and that'll give it more perspective. Right now, I think it looks just a little flat and I think at home, it might be hard to see the perspective of it. So I'm just taking some of that dark Prussian blue again on my brush and I'm going to come in and I'm gonna put in some real dark in the front and some thicker, thicker wave formations. And that will help with the perspective. There we go. So now I'm just holding the brush and pushing it a little harder to open the bristles up so the waves look wider. There we go. Now I'm coming back again and I'm blending. Back and forth. I'm going straight across because this is not a real wavy day. Okay. So. There we have it, we have some, some waves and I can come back and do more work on that. What I'd like to do right now is just add a little bit of a mountain rock area in the background and that will give our painting even more perspective. I'm gonna wipe off my brush a little bit and I will pick up my palette to show you which colors I'm mixing. This, I, I wiped it off, I'm not washing it, it's okay if there's a little blue in there. This is a little black Mixing a little white, a little brown. I want to get like a pale gray color. We want these mountains to look like they're in the distance and everything else is a little color, a little closer. So now this looks a little bit brown to me. I'll put a little bit more black, a little more white. There we go. And I think that's it right about there. A nice pale gray color. Whoops. So I accidentally scraped my uh, palette on my canvas. Just to fix that, all I have to do, this is oil paint. The paint moves around so nicely. So all I did was take my brush and go back over. Now I can kind of see my horizon line here. So I'm just going to come across my horizon so I have an idea of where my little mountain range will be. On this left or right you can start. I'm starting on the left here just to make a little mountain range. I'm shaping it whichever way I see it in my mind. I'm not really following a picture. And you can see I'm holding the brush a little flatter, making little mountains. Some may be a little bigger, a little smaller. We don't want a uh, repetitious pattern. Just want it to look like a mountain range. Now, if I see that my horizon line here, I slipped a little bit, we have a great tool for that called the wipe off tool. And all I have to do, I'm gonna lay this brush down, all I have to do is take my wipe off tool and I can come in and remove some of that paint. There's two sides, just a way to fix it. And I can come in with a clean dry brush and just rub like this, and it'll just look like a little reflection now in the water. Oh, which is a good idea. I think I will put a, bit, a little bit of a reflection in the water. I'm gonna go back to my other brush and take some of the paint off, and I'll just come underneath here and mimic a little bit of what I've done on top. And we'll give it a little reflection. You can see I'm going right through the, um, the sailboat tape now I'm just right underneath. It doesn't have to be exact. This is just a reflection in the water. And look at that little spot. I can just rub that right out there. Even it out a little bit. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. You can start from either way. I'm just going back and forth, making it a little easier. Hopefully easier for the camera to go back and forth. There we go. A Little bit of a background mountain. Okay, put my palette down again. Now, what we can do is spend a little while working on our sailboat. Um, to lift up the tape, you can use the corner of the knife, or if you're lucky enough to have nails, you can just come right under, and I will reveal the sailboat. You can see it's just simple shapes. 
nothing too complex. You don't have to uh, know how to draw to do this. You could just make a couple of sailboat um, shapes and then this way you'll have a nice uh, sailboat. Now, of course, if you want to be particular, you can go online and you can see exactly how the sailboats are made and you can make it very literal. But for the sake of the show, I just wanted to give you the lesson. And this is a beginner. This I would teach in a beginner class. And anybody would be able to do it. Teenagers love these too. So, now we're going to paint in our sailboat. Once, and you can see the perspective of it now that the tape is off the sailboat. Okay, I'm going to take a smaller brush now and, sorry, here we go. I have a small, a small, a little bit of a smaller flat brush. I'm not going to worry too much about the color. I just want to show you how easy this would be to do a sailboat picture. I'm mixing a yellow ochre with some cadmium yellow and some white just to make a color that I think would show out really nicely among that blue color. So here we go. Paint in a little bit of the sailboat. So this is a little bit more detailed than my other paintings and I will try my best to block in the sailboat and I'll use a smaller brush in a moment to go around the edges if I have to. And it's a little bit dry. We, I probably could have used a little medium, but we're just going to go without it right now. I'm going to add a little bit more paint, a little bit more white, and I'm hoping that I'm not blocking the camera. I will try to paint it from a different angle here. We want to get some lights and darks in there. You can see I'm already doing that, getting some lights and darks. I'm not real worried if I go over the line a little. Let's face it, the wind could be blowing that sail. And if I wanted to, I could really take my time on it. But for the sake of the show, just want to get that in there. There we go. So I'll come do this other one. Now that's a little bit whiter. I put more white paint in there. We don't really have a, um, a light source in this painting, so I can pretty much put any colors on here that I want. If we had a light source, we might try to aim a light you know, at a certain spot, but in this case, just for the lesson, we'll get these sails on. Okay, back again. I'm just going into some of my color here changing it up a little, yellow ochre, yellow, white. Here we go. I'm on the chisel edge of the brush so I can drag it down. That's kind of a nice color. I'll put a little dark in here. See how I'm just moving the paint over? I can take some of the light color, move it to the dark, and that's the beauty of oil painting. You can do that up to a few days even after. All right, there we go. Have some nice lights and darks. I think it's pretty with the blue. Now, like I said, at home, if you were to do this painting, you would take your time. This painting should probably take about an hour or, or more to do this painting would be the best amount of time. I'm just going to take a little bit of black and I'm laying my uh, palette back down again just so I can have more control. I put some black on the brush and going to make like a gray, a darker gray color. And I'm just going to come in and paint this little portion of the boat. There we go. And you're going to see it starting to pop off the page. I'm not worried if it's not too even. There we go. Get our bottom of the boat in there. That should be starting to look pretty good by now. Okay, going back, just putting a little more paint. Now, this bottom of the boat could be a little darker, a little whiter. Doesn't necessarily have to be this color. What I'll do is maybe come in with a little white, put a little bit of white in here just so it looks like it's moving a little. Okay, maybe put a little white in here. Make it a little bigger and come up this way. 
maybe looks like a little seat. Okay, wiping off my brush now. Here we go. Now what I'd like to do is put some lining in here, which I'd like to do with a palette knife. I could take a script liner, which is a long brush, and I could pull up some lines here, but I'm going to use a big palette knife and go into some black and some brown. I'm spreading this out real thin. See that? What I'll do is I'm just going to slice across it. I'm going to get a pretty good amount of paint on there. I don't know if you can see, I made a bead. Okay. And I'm going to come in and just put a couple nice pieces coming up. Nice. And I did pretty good. I got them pretty straight there. Maybe put a little bit across here. There we go. A little bit across here. Okay. Maybe come in here. So what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing now the paint off the knife and adding detail to my sailboat. Okay. Couldn't even dab a little in here just to give an illusion that maybe something is in there. Maybe there's somebody sitting. It's just the illusion of it. This is not detailed. Okay. There we go. So that would take care of putting in some little people. Could be anything there, really. Okay, now what I'd like to do is just put a little bit of a reflection in, in the water from the, from the sails. There we go. I'm going to come back to my yellow ochre. I'm using the same colors that I've already used. A little yellow. You can see my paint is nice and thick. I'm losing a few hairs off the brush, but that's okay. If they go on to the painting, I'll just lift them right up. All righty, here we go. So, let me get that out of the way. And the sail is, just say about here. Now you can see I'm just going back and forth, making a little wider and thinner. I'll turn my brush over since I picked up some blue. And just scrubbing in a little bit of a reflection. It did pick up some of those colors, but that's okay. Then I will get my feather brush. And even though it has a blue on it, that's okay. Just want to come back across and get a nice reflection in that water. Now, there's so much else we could do to the painting. If we wanted to make the mountains have a little bit more detail, all we'd have to do is come in to some nice color. I have a clean fan brush here. This is a fan brush. And dabbing on some paint, we can come over here and even just dab some detail in. Now, this is not something that you have to do, but it's something that will make the painting look a little nicer, putting in a little bit more detail here and there. So all I'm doing is gently dabbing some of this paint on. Now, we don't want to add too much because then it will make the painting uh, lose some of its perspective. Okay, so just dabbing on a little bit. We can go back, maybe add a couple of clouds too. There's a lot extra we could add if we wanted to. I can go back to my my uh, large fan brush and I can go into this black color even with my blue that was still on there and I can make a gray again, a little bit of white. And we wanted to make some clouds a little darker. I can just come in here and put a little gray. I had a couple minutes so I figured let me show you how we would do this if we decided to darken some of these clouds. Now, very simply, I will go back to my blending brush and actually I'm going to take a mop brush, like a mop, and I can blend. And this will give the clouds a little bit of a dark appearance underneath. I'm just blending it in, anchoring it to the sky. I'm just rubbing them in. So it changes the appearance a little. It makes the painting look Maybe like a storm might be coming or a couple dark clouds underneath just hanging around. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Then 
you take a step back. You should always look at your painting from a few feet back to see if there's anything else you need. I like the way this front water looks, so I'm going to come back in and I'm going back into my dark blue and I want to add even a couple more dark lines in here representing some waves that are even closer. Some lines in the water, not necessarily waves, but just some depth into the water. And I will go back again and blend. Oh, I got a little bit of paint there. All I have to do is pick that right up. Okay, so back to my feather brush and again, back and forth, back and forth. I'm pushing a little harder. So I have some pressure on the brush, blending back and forth. Okay. Now I think that makes everything stand out a little more. Since I made the water darker, I could even come back in again and I can even add a little dark up here. And this is how we can actually turn this painting into a painting that looks more stormy. We might have started out calm and now we got stormy. So. Who knows, we might have been on that boat and we were sailing nice and then all of a sudden dark clouds come in and here's a storm coming. So you can see the difference it makes just by me adding a little bit more darks to this. So very, very lightly rubbing just to deposit some of the paint. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm kind of scrubbing it in, moving my brush around. And then I can go back to my feather brush again. Here we go. And a little blend, a little extra blend down in the water, maybe a little blend in the reflection. And we're just about done with this painting. There we go. I'd like to thank you for tuning in today and watching me paint and I hope that you'll come back again. Thanks so much for tuning in and see you next time.